These pictures of Baron Manfred von Richthofen, considered one of Germany's greatest fighter aces, were taken on the morning of his death, April the 21st, 1918. But just how the Red Baron died has been a source of controversy for 80 years. On Anzac Day this year, two independent witnesses said they saw Canadian pilot Roy Brown shoot down the Red Baron. A lot of the Australians claim to have brought him down, that everybody fired at him. But it was a Canadian that brought him down. Since then, there's been controversy as to who should get the credit, the machine gunner on the ground or this bloke. But uh, I've got no doubt about it that the, 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 the bloke in the aeroplane had a better chance of shooting him down than the, the machine gunner. But now, Harold Edwards, who also lives in Brisbane, contradicts that story. Mr. Edwards guarded Manfred von Richthofen's body after it was recovered until it was buried. He says the famous red plane crashed between the Allied and German battle lines. Being under fire, one of our men, uh, a corporal, crawled out with a rope, put the rope round the body, and uh, then he came back again, and they pulled the body with the rope, they pulled the body to their cover and brought him home, and Scotty Melville and I had to guard the body in turn, take two hour turns to guard the body. The aircraft was in no man's land, how did you get it back? The aircraft itself, they uh, couldn't take the, uh, make themselves so exposed. They came at night time to get that, and after dark they got that and brought it in. So all sorts of things have been said about it, but that's actually what happened because I was there uh, at the uh, at the base, and uh, Scotty Melton and I were looking after that body, and then the plane was brought in, and uh, it had been a fair bit damaged. A certain amount of salvaging had been done already. Mr. Edwards says a post mortem examination shows Manfred von Richthofen had been shot from the ground. We had to look after it overnight and well into the day, uh, and there were several different autopsies or uh, inspections. But the bullet that uh, killed him went in his right side, a little lower down than the, uh, well, it was about 10 inches from the shoulder, and came out just underneath the left breast. There's no doubt about it, he was shot in that. Now, I can't see how an aeroplane could have done that. I would say it's ground forces that did that. I can't see anything else for it myself. A few days later, Harold Edwards wrote to his local newspaper in Bendigo about the death. He was recognised as a great airman and clean fighter, and accordingly he was buried with full military honours. A coffin was supplied, four large wreaths were brought from uh, various squadrons, and a number of our boys went as a firing party. There were a large number of officers, some of whom were staff in attendance at the funeral, and several reporters, and three or four official photographers, one of them having a cinema camera. A great honour for the squadron, of course. Oh, it was, yes. It's interesting that the, the third squadron is the one that seems to have carried forward. After all these years, it's still the principal squadron. Number three squadron now operates Australia's frontline fighter, the FA-18. Harold Edwards is not only the oldest surviving member of Number 3 Squadron, he's also the oldest surviving member of the Australian Flying Corps. It's a distinction the squadron hasn't forgotten. Number 3 Squadron was honouring one of its own. Harold Edwards was the last of the Australian Flying Corps from the Great War. Military officials joined family and community on Brisbane's Bayside to remember. He's had a long association with Three Squad, and I think he was an inspiration to the uh, World War II uh, veterans, and uh, he's maintained the association all the way through. We're more or less carried on from where these chaps like Harold uh, made a name for themselves and fought for their country in the First World War. Harold Edwards was best known as the airman who guarded the Red Baron's body after the German ace was shot out of the skies over France in 1918. Mr Edwards maintained an Australian ground soldier shot down Baron von Richthofen. There's no doubt about he was shot in that. Now, I can't see how a, an aeroplane could have done that. I would say it's the ground forces that did that. Grandpa had a one, wonderful um, life of history and encountering the Red Baron was one of those mo magic moments. Mr Edwards dedicated his life to the community and his Christian faith. 
A neighbour, whose daily chats with Mr Edwards always started with a handshake, delivered the eulogy. My last handshake with him was late last Saturday, and it was his best handshake of all. A military honour guard paid tribute outside the church, while at the gravesite the last post rang out, a presenting of arms signalling the end of an era. Oh. Alison Smith, ABC News. On April the 21st, 1918, German flying ace Baron Manfred von Richthofen climbed into his famous Fokker triplane for the last time. Australian troops on the ground witnessed the Red Baron's final battle. Shouting around, the Red Baron's up, the Red Baron's up. Craggy, oh, there's the Red Baron, all right. He's chasing one of our blacks. Outnumbered, Baron von Richthofen was mortally wounded. And it's, he, he crashed into the uh, the brickyard there and the wall stopped him and you went over to have a look right there it was right on the spot there's disagreement whether the red baron was killed by a canadian pilot or australian soldiers on the ground he, he, he was definitely shot by the canadian a lot of the australians claim to have brought him down that Everybody fired at him, but it was a Canadian that brought him down. I've got no doubt about it that the, 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 the bloke in the aeroplane had a better chance of shooting him down than the, the machine gunner. Baron Manford von Richthofen was buried with full military honours. The final salute by members of the Australian Flying Corps. There was Gallipoli and Anzac Cove, and controversy still surrounds the military exercise where so many Anzacs died. But on April the 21st, 1918, Baron von Richthofen climbed into his famous red fighter plane for the last time, sparking another controversy. It was well known among aviators that photographs before takeoff were unlucky, but the Red Baron treated such mystique with contempt. Later, attempting to shoot down an Allied aircraft, Baron Manfred von Richthofen was killed. A Canadian fighter pilot had shot at and hit the Red Baron's plane, but on the ground an Australian machine gunner also claimed to have killed the German ace. Now, almost 80 years later, two old diggers who watched the fight refute the Australian claim. Well, this particular morning, Shout went around, the Red Baron's up, the Red Baron's up. Craggy, oh, there's the Red Baron, all right. He's chasing one of our blacks. Doing all this, oh, Craggy, it was wonderful to look at. 
down low. And uh, the round, of course, this is, I think this was his 81st, this bloke. He'd shot down about eight, at least 80. It might have been his, might have been shot down 81, but I don't know. But anyhow, this was the 80, 81th. And uh, he was doing his best to, to, to get this poor brother down, and the other bloke was doing his best not to let him shoot him down. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, came a plane down on the red barrel tail. He'd never had this in his life before. He'd never expected anything like this. And of course, he was going on, and all of a sudden, he plummeted down. Get away. Also watching history being made above, was Reg Lees. The two soldiers didn't know each other then, and 80 years later, they still haven't met. But their eyewitness accounts of the fight are the same. He, he, he was definitely shot by the Canadian. A lot of the Australians claimed to have brought him down that everybody fired at him, but it was a Canadian that brought him down. Well, the last I saw of Rick Toffin, he was 30 feet ahead of me, just before he crashed into the brickyard. Did you go over and have a look? I was straight on the scene. Can you tell me, what was it like? What happened? Well, when I got there, Rick Toffin was flying the latest uh, German machine and uh, four wheels on it, you see. And it's, he, he crashed into the, uh, the brickyard there and the wall stopped him. And, and you went over to have a look? Right there, I was right on the spot. In his memoirs, Reg says he and a mate visited the crash site where the Red Baron had died. But by that time, the plane had been largely stripped and only the frame of the triplane was left. This bloke came down from the sky. In my, in my book, it, 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 he's the one that should get the credit. But there's been, since then, there's been controversy as to who should get the credit, the machine gunner on the ground or this bloke. But uh, I've got no doubt about it that the, 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 the bloke in the aeroplane had a better chance of shooting him down than the, the machine gunner. Both hope their recollections will help put the controversy to rest. We're gathered here today, gentlemen, to mark the 50th anniversary of the shooting down and death of the Red Baron. As you know, he was a famous man in aerial warfare, having been the top scoring ace in World War I. In his memory, I will ask you to bow your heads for one minute. These men probably know more about von Richthofen than the German Air Force did in 1918. They're members of the Australian Society of World War I Aero Historians, and they're standing in the shadow of the only completely restored albatross in the world. It was in this kind of aircraft that von Richthofen made about 60 of his 80 kills. Richtofen has always been something of an Australian legend, chiefly because several Australians claim to have shot him down from the ground. It was a group from the Australian Flying Corps who fired the salute at von Richtofen's funeral. Mr Harold Thomas spent 2,000 hours restoring the albatross. 
wasn't it unusual to revere an enemy pilot? No, not in the least. Not in the least, no. I, I think uh, probably Rommel may be uh, celebrated in uh, 50 years later when uh, somebody may restore a, a tank or something. But uh, no, no criticism whatsoever. Why do you think uh, Rick Toffin was above all other pilots? Why was he so good? But I say because he applied science to aerial fighting. He, uh, he fought on a scientific basis. He studied aerial fighting and applied scientific principles to aerial fighting. He was at some disadvantage in a plane like this, wasn't he? Uh, a slight disadvantage. This aeroplane was structurally uh, not, not as strong as it uh, we say could have been, but with uh, modifications it was brought up to the required strength. But while he was using this aircraft, he was definitely the disadvantage. If von Richthofen was at some mechanical disadvantage, he certainly didn't let it worry him. He was a cool and systematic killer. Silver mugs were made to commemorate each score. He once wrote, my father discriminates between a sportsman and a butcher. The latter shoots for fun. When I've shot an Englishman, my hunting passion is satisfied for an hour. The eldest son of an aristocratic family Manfred first joined the cavalry, but he was always being thrown from his horse, and after an inglorious charge, he was moved to a supply unit. He sought a transfer to the Air Force, and after wrecking two aircraft in his first two solo flights, he advanced quickly to become the greatest ace of the war. But the question remains, who shot him down? This has been argued by many, but uh, I feel he was shot down by a machine gunner on the ground. What's always confused the ground theory is this photograph showing wounds to von Richthofen's head. On the morning of his death, the Red Baron was in fact pursuing a British shop with camel close to the ground. But he seemed unaware that another camel, piloted by a Canadian named Roy Brown, was on his tail. Brown said he fired a burst of machine gun bullets into the Red Fokker, saw the pilot slump forward, and then watched the Fokker crash just beyond the Australians' trenches. But the president of the Aero Historian Society, Mr Ron Cooper, and a member, Mr Derek White, say that von Richthofen was killed by a shot from an Australian gunner on the ground. Well, the shot entered the right side of the body, just under the armpit, mm. and there is uh, conflicting ev medical evidence as to whether the bullet passed right through and came out on the left side just above the breast, or whether it in fact ricocheted off the spine and then came out. But in any case, I feel the bullet would have entered about there, probably a little higher, and it was fired obviously in an upward direction as it left the body at a higher point than that at which it entered. You've, you've got a rare agreement on this. So why do you think there's been so much controversy over it? Well, I think possibly because of prestige purposes at the time, naturally, the RAF had been formed on the 1st of April. He was shot down on the 21st. Naturally, for prestige reasons, they would like to think that Nehrman shot him. Uh, equally, for prestige reasons, of course, the Army wished to claim or to... Yeah. Mr. White, why, why has von Richthofen in particular become such a legend? Well, I think um, the first reason for this in, in the extent of time uh, is that um, people love a mystery. People love inconclusive things. Yeah. Richthofen himself cared little for mystery or superstition. On the morning of April 21, 1918, he walked from his lavishly furnished and flower-decorated quarters and posed for photographs beside his aircraft. It was well known among aviators that photographs before takeoff were unlucky, but the Red Baron treated such mystique with contempt. There's not even agreement as to the time of von Richthofen's death. Some reports said 10.35, others 11.45. But one thing is certain, there was only one Red Baron.